Yeah, I was in Boston. I went to Faneuil Hall. Yeah, but how? Why would you go to Faneuil Hall without Jurgen Park? I thought he was to be jugglers doing shows. There oh, were no jugglers there. There was guitarists. No jugglers. No jugglers or magicians. Just guitarists. It sucks. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, welcome to Penn Sunday School starring Penn Gillette. My name is Michael Godot. Matt Donnelly, Penn and I are broadcasting from Show Creator Studios south in Las Vegas. Today we have a question. What the fuck is ballet? <laughs> Penn bought a dashiki and he was chased upstairs by a bear with no stairs or bear. Here he is preaching love, Mr. Penn Gillette. Preaching love is what I'm doing, and uh, it's Mother's Day. It is. It's Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. How's your relationship guest? with you? I mean, I know, we know that Matt Donnelly lost his mother very young. Yeah, yeah, we know a lot about the ghost mother. We know that, what's that? I still have a great relationship. Though. Yeah, sure, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. They, ghost mom. There's so many people <laughs> that can put you in touch with her. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, you, we know I was a mama's boy, and then I lost my mom when the century started. Yeah. Or I guess you could argue about that, 2000. Maybe the century started 2001. Who cares? But you um, want friends, or you want to be right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how was your relationship with your mother? It's pretty good. Uh, they're in Chicago now. They were in Phoenix for a long time, and um, so I get out there when I can to see them. I called her this morning, left her a message. She was out gallivanting around. Are they retired? They are retired. Yeah, and this cult- is, we haven't we haven't said this is Rich Ross, our oh, yeah. pal Richard Ross, yeah. is our, our cephalopod expert, our yeah. ceph expert, and um, and uh, your your mother maybe culturally is uh, is Mother's Day a time to go out for bagels and cream cheese, and, did- or is it hot dogs <laughs> with sauerkraut? What is it, Chicago? So she's into everything. So oh. so I, I'm, she's probably hanging out with my sister's family right mm-hmm. now, and they're probably. Uh, at my niece's house, and they're probably just eating a bunch of food. They probably also went to the Liberty Cafe or the Liberty Restaurant, which is really terrible, and she just loves it. What kind of food is Liberty? Uh, every kind of food, which is why it's terrible. <laughs> ah, I yeah. was, like a diner? Like it's a like a diner, diner, but it's 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 um, sketchier than a diner. Do they have um, a, uh, a dessert carousel? No, they just have a guy who comes out and says, um, the owner, the lamb is really good. You should have the lamb, which of course says to me, the lamb is going bad. Please buy the lamb. <laughs> right. um, but uh, they love it there because they can get whatever they're in the mood for. I decided that uh, my definition of wealthy, which is different than Jeff Bezos' definition, <laughs> <laughs> coincidentally, was being able to go to a Jersey diner and order the most expensive thing on the menu. Yeah, I love the lobster tail. The lobster tail. One of the early oh, yeah. conversations yeah. we had. Mine was to be able to throw a coffee cup through a window. Yeah, and then just give them the cash. But you have that money. You have that much. I money. have that much money now. Yes. But you don't do it. I don't do it. No. So you were lying. No, I just. Uh, what I've tried to do. A was, taste of change. Did you go? You went to a <laughs> diner and ordered lobster. I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How was it? It was good. It was like I'm, I'm like I felt wicked rich. Excellent. Um, the other one was uh, pistachios. Pistachio. Oh, that was well. That was the line that Phil Lesh. Of the Grateful Dead, not considered one of the great wits of our time, <laughs> but they they interviewed <laughs> Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead like in the seventies, yeah, and said um, he had you know th- that's when they had gotten started to get incredibly wealthy. You know they're the most successful performing ensemble of all time, right? The Grateful Dead are, and they'd gotten to be very very wealthy, and they asked Phil Lesh what it was like. To be really, really rich. By the way, Copperfield just heard that in Hired a Bassist. <laughs> <laughs> um, Phil Lesh uh, was asked, what's it like to be as rich as you are? And he said, you know, when you're eating pistachios and there's some that are really hard to get your thumbnails into and you have to, like, bite them, I just throw those away now. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. I've tried to remember when I was a child, like 12 years old, yeah. What I thought I would do if I had a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like I'd buy a tractor trailer or Snickers or something. <laughs> yeah. But I can't remember. It's not a question of not wanting to do it now. I just can't remember. What do you think you would have come up with? I don't well, know. Uh, uh, maybe it would be like having a whole band set up that I could just yeah. play. Were there music things that time? you just wanted? You can't remember anything that you thought. I don't. You I know, wish I, I could. I didn't want for much. Right. You know, I, I've never been. Um, I've never had aspirations for buying fancy stuff. I mean, I, I should say 
that I have a Tesla and I live in a nice house. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm I'm, I'm living a, a monkish lifestyle, but I've never really had that. That's never been the driving force in my life. Right. And I've never really coveted much. You know? Yeah. Um, As a kid, I dreamed of uh, an indoor train, like a train that would, uh, that would drive me from room to room. Mm out of silver spoons that was on the show silver spoons oh yeah i definitely love that a train drove kids from room to room i think maybe uh, i read that mike nesmith yeah had a pool in his house that was inside and outside with a divider that Ooh. came down like a foot yeah you could swim under and go outside yeah i think i remember thinking that was cool and i also remember matt helm had a bed a round bed that that moved across the floor of his room and tilted up and slid him into his hot bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should That's just a for, rich guy thing. Just to fuck with people, I think you should get an indoor basketball court. Yeah, I almost did. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at houses. Yeah. We were moving out of the slammer, go drive a tank through it. We were looking at houses, and one house had a a basketball court yeah. in the cellar, and it had a lot of other stuff that we liked. Yeah. And there was a moment we were considering getting it, and we thought it'd be so funny. And we were wondering what we're going to use for the basketball court. And I just thought, let's just leave it. Yeah. So, <laughs> and my basketball course, you got a basketball? Nope. Nope. <laughs> one of these days, going to get a basketball. We spent most of the money on the court. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to bring over your basketball, we'll have that covered. So, um, we've had many heartbreaks of being wrong uh -oh. on this show. Oh, boy. Many heartbreaks of being wrong. And this may be... Even the, just you saying that, the pregnant pause, like too many things pop into my brain. <laughs> yeah, uh, those possibilities. Well, this one, this one's a heartbreaker. Oh, no. And it's a heartbreaker on the wrong side, to give you a little hint. Uh-oh. I went to get uh, my stress test for my heart. Mm -hmm. And I went to my doctor and got off the elevator, went into the doors, and a voice said, security, get him out of here. And I looked over, and it was Donny Osmond. Now, if you'd have told me that Donny Osmond and I would have a tremendous amount in common, like any time, I would have thought you were crazy. But over the years, every time I see Donny Osmond, he's nice, he's kind, he seems to understand me. Oh, no. And we have a lot in common, and oh, I just no. love him. So we talked and told stories, and he told me great stories of Rosie O'Donnell, like that he said... Here's the time I was a bad guy and people booed for me. He said, people are supposed to hate you. They're not supposed to hate <laughs> Donny Osmond. <laughs> and he told me this whole long story about how he accidentally implied that Rosie O'Donnell was a fat pig on her own show. <laughs> and how everybody hated him for that. And then he told me this whole long story about being hated and people booing him and coming up to him and Rosie O'Donnell hating him. And then said that this beautiful Beautiful Donny Osmond delivery. You know, I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's kind of fun to not be Donny Osmond, to be some of the people don't like. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's going to go. Like, he's retiring from the uh, Flamingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's do like WWE and you can do like a heel turn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, totally become a wrestling villain. Uh, yeah, but he was just so wonderful. Yeah. And I said to him, how did you end up being the one child star who didn't grow up fucked up. And he said that may be the nicest thing they've ever said to me. Because you know, he was good friends with Michael Jackson, yeah. who when he was talking about him called him Mike, which oh, was funny. so goofy. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, Mike uh, Mike and I used to, you know. Like literally the same grade, right? They yeah. like went to the grade school together. But no, they didn't. Oh, Because no. he did not go to school. Donny Osmond didn't go to school. I said to him, you know, I can't imagine what your life was like growing up because you've been famous since you were five. And Donnie said four. <laughs> <laughs> so he could count, even though he hadn't been to school. And he said, it was all, tut it was all tutors. So he said, I, I said, I live vicariously to my children because I don't know what it's like to have your, your father on a billboard. And he said, same with me. I don't know what it's like to go to school or to have friends. <laughs> he said, I grew up playing stadiums. And he said, then you're playing stadiums, you're a superstar. And then it just ends. And I said, everybody knows it's going to end except you, right? He said, yeah. And I said, how weird was that? He said, well, I don't know what to compare it to. I had no mm. sense of a normal life at all. And I said, did you grew up, you're kind, you're nice, you're happy? He said, well, I mostly do meeting my wife at the right time. I think she probably saved me. But I said, 
everybody else who's a child star kind of i guess neil patrick harris but neil patrick harris was 13 or 14. Right? yeah i'm talking about not tiny yeah not four or five you know yeah and he asked if i watched the michael jackson hbo thing i said no i'm not interested he said me neither i want to remember mike the way i knew him mm -hmm. but uh you know uh it was it was fascinating but then i said uh oh you know on sunday school we did a whole oh, thing no. about you Oh, because no. that your insides are completely flipped. Yeah. And he said, uh, that's not true. Oh, God. I said, <laughs> what? He said, well, we're here at a heart doctor right now. We can go in and they can <laughs> show you where my heart is. I said, why is that listed as something? He said, can your organs be backward? Then I ended up explaining it to him. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him it was like, you know, whatever it is, it's three and 10,000. Did you make something. up someone else who had it? Did you say Katy Perry? <laughs> it turns out Neil, Katy pa Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> I also said, why wouldn't that be me if you're going to have something interesting like that? Well, I said, and Donnie, really, to me, it's the only interesting thing about you. <laughs> <laughs> and Donnie said, I did have a bad appendix that burst in kind of the wrong place. <laughs> I said, out of that comes this whole story? He said, I'm sorry. I said, I I'm heartbroken here. <laughs> and then I went in, and I have a left bundle branch block mm -hmm. in my heart, electrical thing. So when they do a stress test, which they want to do on me, they can't do a get on the treadmill mm -hmm. stress test. Not because it's dangerous, but just because they can't get the information. So they have to do a pharmaceutical stress test. Oh, that's got to be awful. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> and I said oh, to my no. doctor, I'm looking forward to this. And he said, no one else ever has. <laughs> and I said to the, uh, to the person administering the test, I said, I'm going to love this. And they said, no, you're not. I said, but I am. And they, they, they had me drink a little bit of coffee afterwards to, to take the drugs. They injected me with radioactive substances. They bring it out yeah. in a lead line thing. And they, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. they put it in you. Yeah. yeah. Then they, we don't want to be anywhere near this. But it, you, we're going to put it in your veins. Injected it into me, which is nothing. It's just a trace, tracer thing. There's no side effects to that. And they put, took pictures of my heart and stuff. Then they sat me down, and I had the IV line still in, my flexible catheter. Um, and uh, they said, okay, we're going to put this in. And she said, I'm usually pretty good at it because the manual says 10 seconds. They usually do 20. It makes it a little easier. And she said, you'll start feeling this in a, uh, in a few seconds. And she pushes the plunger, right? And they've taken my heart rate. My blood pressure is pretty good. My heart, rate's, my heart rate is naturally very, very low. I usually around 50, mm -hmm. 51, my sitting heart rate. Wow. Yeah. So I'm sitting there at about 51. And they go, <laughs> and she pushes the plunger, and then a little saline to wash it down. You always have a saline chaser. And, uh, and all of a sudden, my whole body thinks I'm being chased by a bear up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, there are no stairs, and there's no bear. Wow. No bear, no stairs, but my body is going there's a bear, there's stairs, look at this. <laughs> and I watch in the little thing, because I'm, I'm hooked up to an EKG, I watch my heart rate goes way up, <laughs> and I feel that hot all uh -huh. over my body that I'm really, yeah. really working out, and all of my uh, blood vessels are expanding, and I'm really ready for action, and I'm sitting quietly in a chair. She says, we have a drug that stops it right away if you can't stand it. I said, no, 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 <laughs> I'm digging it. And what I thought about was, uh, you meditate, right, Rich? A little bit, yeah. yeah. But um, one of the things that in Sam Harris's meditation he does is there's a lot of talk of pulling back and letting you feel emotionally things while watching yourself from a distance. Mm -hmm. Or not even watching yourself because there's no, there's no watcher. But uh, as Sam Harris always says, it's like a mirror. It simply reflects. So your consciousness experiences stuff and i've been you know i've been meditating now with sam harris for 220 days and with um, headspace for 1200 over 1200 days and uh although um with ego and self i seem to be naturally resistant to this i have made real headway and sometimes when i am feeling a little upset i can sit and concentrate on my breathing and be able to step away and observe the emotions. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that this is kind of the final exam for meditation because it's a wonderful experience. So there's that those 
probably apocryphal stories that uh, what was his name? Baba Ram, Baba Ram, Baba, 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 I don't know. Baba Rum Raisin. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, who uh, Let's who start with the about apologies for next week? <laughs> giving, yeah, uh, write that down, would you? Uh, <laughs> giving uh, uh, giving acid, giving acid to a uh, Buddhist monk, mm. you know, heavy duty. Mm. Transcendental guy, and then having no effect, no effect. on him. Yeah, yeah, probably an apocryphal story, or a lying tripper. No, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's yeah. more likely. Probably. Lying. He's like my brand would say. I, this is a, yeah, a exactly. chance for me to whip out just enough to win here. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you giving me something? I feel nothing. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile, being chased by fluorescent tigers up a slide of jello, <laughs> but just able to say, I, and it was this wonderful feeling because I was able to sit there and go, I'm being chased up the stairs by a bear, but that's just my body feeling it, and I'm able to observe this, and it was pretty great. That sounds pretty great. Yeah. I think I think we should probably. Um, Get a bear to chase you upstairs and see if you yeah. can get to the same place. <laughs> yeah. It's the only control we can come up with. <laughs> well, you want a bear to chase you down the stairs, right? Because bears have more trouble running downhill than uphill. They've been said if you're being chased by a bear that running downhill is a good idea. A wise man what? once said that. <laughs> Who, who's, what? There's no point in running from the a bear. Only, He's uh, going 10 times faster than you. you can't, you're going to get 12 feet. The bear's going <laughs> to... It's better to jump off a cliff if a bear is chasing you than to try to run from the bear. I'm because sure then you can fall faster. If there's a, a bear that said it. If there's a bear in my house, I'm going to go downstairs. Yeah, exactly. That's all I'm saying. If there's a bear in my house, I bet you I could kill it with my bare hands. <laughs> no, you could. I you could. I could wrap my bare hands around his bare <laughs> oh, neck. Oh, you, you have special bare hands. I have bare hands. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Put those on. I keep them in a gun safe. I have my bare hands. <laughs> yeah. What did they give you? <laughs> And how did we get some? And was it bear fur? Um, uh, so I, <laughs> like an it's like test. a it's, it's a it's bear a, extract. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, bears and stare extract. Like the dentist. It's, it's been weakened. And then, it's not full strength bear. <laughs> and how long did you do it? Those are the other questions. Not long. Like a, they like were a, like, we got the info, and you were like, let it ride. I was. Yeah, they said we can stop. I said no, we can we can ride with this. Like at the kids' dentist, you can get like you know like grape or bubble gum or whatever. They, yeah. you can have a, a bear stress test. <laughs> yeah, I have a bee leopard. stress test. Yeah. <laughs> leopard. Bear or leopard or, or bees. Meth head. <laughs> meth head or bees. Florida man. I took Florida <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, uh, it's only like four or five minutes. Yeah. And I said all the way through, they said, oh, you're not going to like it. I said, I like this. This is kind of good. This is kind of great. And then they said, you need to eat afterwards because you need to uh, get food in your system. Oh, to thanks. <laughs> and I said, uh, what have you got to, uh, to eat? And they said, we brought you a t uh, turkey sandwich. I said, I I'm not going to eat a turkey sandwich. I'm vegan. So I had like six granola bars that were, that were vegan, <laughs> which I, I was afraid would, would bring the bear back. <laughs> bear back. That's, oh. one, that's one of the things you can get. <laughs> that's right. They're being not all negative. Being raped bear back in prison <laughs> is one of, the, one of the things you can get for your stress test. Prison shower? I don't see how this will raise my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> Want to bet? <laughs> let's do one of these. Yeah, let's do one of these. We're going to stop. Ten. Yeah. You started already. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're early. You're early. Oh, sorry. You've heard me talk many times about my uh, sleep number bed. Yes. Haven't you? And it's really good. And I've been doing, I got, you know, as I got the sleep number bed, I got soft. Last night, I was on the road in Chicago. I was in a very, very fancy, fancy hotel with a beautiful, beautiful bed. And I slept okay. I got back to my sleep number bed. And I slept great. It is the best bed I have ever had. Maybe you wanted a sleep number bed but thought you couldn't afford one. But can you really afford another restless night's sleep? There's never been a better time to save on proven quality sleep. Now, during the Memorial Day sale, a Queen 360 smart bed starts at only $999. If you're going to invite us over, my sleep number is, I think, 65. Oh. My wife's sleep number is 50. So many couples disagree on mattress firmness. Sleep number beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side so it's just right for both of you. 
for both of us. Both of us. Both of us. <laughs> the Sleep Number 360 smart bed is so smart, they sense your every move and automatically adjust to you keeping, keeping you sleeping comfortably throughout the night. Come in during the Memorial Day sale and save $1,000. Yikes. Is that right? On a new Sleep Number 360 special edition smart bed for temperature, balancing, comfort, and exceptional value. A thousand, a, a thousand bucks. That's a lot of a money. A grand up. You'll only find Sleep Number in any of the 575 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find the one nearest you at sleepnumber.com slash pen. That's sleepnumber.com slash pen. Sleep Thank you. Yeah. So we're back from that commercial. And... Uh, <laughs> That was nice. Uh, let's talk a little bit about ads, shall we? Can we talk? Where, where do you want to? We should. Let's talk a little bit about let's ads. Talk about we, the ads, man. We had. Um, uh, oh yeah, we really do have to talk about ads. <laughs> we had Penny Lane. Yeah. On yeah, she's, the show. She's great. Did you listen to the show? I did. Yeah. She's she's, she's fabulous. Delightful. And by the way, a delightful uh, woman. Uh, to uh, to report back on Penny Lane, um, uh, Infowars, uh, Alex Jones, oh, did man. an hour. On uh, hating Penny Lane, wow! For doing the hail Satan thing. Oh, that, is there a that, greater compliment on this earth? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no. So Penny Lane is, I would say, you know, I think she, I think she lives in Brooklyn. Okay. She is. She she's is moving. She's, she's in as, the process of moving now. I believe she. She's as woke as a human being can be. Yeah. So her friends are woke. Everybody's woke. Everybody's awake and woke in her circle of friends. And of course she tells her circle of friends, I'm on this podcast called Penn Sunday School. You should listen in. Oh. Okay. So her, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so her friends listen in to Penn Sunday School. Now her friends might not be um, members of the congregation as a rule. Right. They want to hear their dear friend woke Penny Lane on the Penn Sunday School. Would that be nice? And we're talking about the morality of kidney donation and the morality of kindness and talking about how the world is. And we're talking about all these fairly woke things. Yeah. She came in and kind of woke up our asses. Yeah. And then it goes to the ads. Now, these ads, oh. this is back in the day of Adam Carolla yeah. before we were Dustin Knauss. Back when we we're were Adam Carolla. We're cast Carolla. media now. Yeah, we're cast media. Which we I, want to change the name to Dustin Canals. They're not in favor at the moment. <laughs> so we're on cast media now. But what uh, Adam Carolla used to do, not himself, not in his laptop at home, somebody, <laughs> somebody would do. Do you know that for sure? Would, no, I know. Okay. They would insert ads that we knew nothing about. Nothing about. We didn't read. Like, this ads we read. We know sleep number. And we're actually so very careful. They send us stuff, and we review it, and we try the stuff, and we decide we we're no. doing it. Or we say no to stuff all the time. We say no to stuff all the time. The stuff that we read, we decide on. Yeah. But Adam Carolla would throw in ads we had nothing to do with, which I think Cast is going to do, too. But they would throw in an ad that was not in my voice, but just there for people listening. So we're listening to Brooklyn, Penny Lane, Woke, <laughs> Hip listening all her friends listening probably at least 20 percent of them with ironic beards yeah probably 35 percent of them with an expensive cup of coffee in yep. their hand mm -hmm. sure a lot of probably man buns. some of them man buns probably <laughs> cross training slim pants slim pants no doubt about yeah. it and probably wearing colorful shirts that are still tasteful <laughs> maybe one or two even wearing bowling shirts ironically with a name that isn't theirs Butch. over the pocket. <laughs> Butch. On comes the ad for two things in the same week with Betty Lane. <laughs> Coke Brothers, <laughs> Monsanto. Oh, <laughs> fun. Fabulous. That's, That's quite a cocktail. Fantastic. Fabulous. Literally. Fabulous. <laughs> and um, confused, I would say, the living fuck out of those woke motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Just confused. And us. And us. <laughs> so then... They were a surprise as we uh, were. As many people know, we have a um, crazy person who's on the spectrum who answers our mail. Ready, Rich. So a Hello. chemist... <laughs> <laughs> so a chemist who used to work at Monsanto and quit for moral reasons is a member of the congregation. And he writes an outraged letter to Ready Rich. 
<laughs> not knowing that you are casting your crazy upon the water and it returns tenfold. <laughs> <laughs> when you write to Penn Sunday School, you might think you're writing to me or Kudo, yeah. but you're not. You're writing to Ready Rich. You're loading a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some podcasts have like a trivia segment, you know, things like that. Like we basically a whole generate a whole uh, content generator for us. Yeah, is simply knowing and having listeners know the process of what writing in a Penn Sunday School means. Yeah, yeah, and true. If you're writing in for like to get me for a speaking engagement right. or to uh, an old friend to connect, that stuff gets channeled right through Ready Rich. Write to Glenn, write to me. Yeah. If there's something that needs to be done technically, that gets taken care of. But if you write <laughs> a particular <laughs> complaint with a philosophical bent, you yeah. know, if you write that, um, Bob Dylan once said, don't ask me nothing about nothing. I just might tell you the truth. <laughs> you ask Ready Rich about something like that, he will engage. And the thing is that you started the writing, so you've already <laughs> engaged, okay? So what you can imagine is if you are going to have a complaint about the uh, Penn Sunday School, you have two choices. You can go into a abandoned train tunnel that's full of crazy homeless people. You can sit down with one of them, give them some LSD, and bring your complaint to them. Or you can write to Reddy. <laughs> and the answers you'll get will be very, very similar. So, Reddy, what was your uh, what was your Monsanto discussion? Well, I, I guess we have to start with the corrections department. Okay. This was the first week for Dustin. Mm. It was a Dustin ad. Okay. Uh, it was Casper. Yes. Okay. Uh, but, again, just to asterisk that, we did say we didn't care either way. <laughs> <laughs> that we, we control our live reads, but when it comes to people inserting stuff, we don't really have uh, much of a say or control. We don't have any say in that. Just don't about, even know about, about everything or just ads? You yes. can insert anything in your <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we'll talk. And just in general, we assume that if that the audience understands an inserted ad that we're not reading has a lower level of endorsement from us. Sure. Sure. Should be a good assumption. But I do also trust Dustin to understand the show well enough to not throw in like the Psychic Friends Network or whatever. So Fair. we have supported both Monsanto and the Coke Industries in various forms on uh, bullshit and on this on this uh, show. Mm -hmm. So so I decided to uh, engage that particular debate. <laughs> 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 Give him room. Um, Shall we hold your beer? <laughs> hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so we did get roughly a dozen emails on this. Uh -huh. And I'd say nine or ten of them were, hey, by the way, did you know these two particular companies were advertising with you? And when I pursued those further, they said, that they were cool with it. They weren't complaints. They were just notices. I like, like that. When we did the Hillary reasonable. ad a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had a, actually had three complaints. One of them did not respond to my uh, initial salvo. <laughs> yeah. And the other two, what appealed to me about both those males was they were both framed as a boycott. We're going to stop listening to your show because you support this product, mm -hmm. which is the exact opposite of how boycotts work. We're going to stop buying your product because you support this artistic endeavor. That's the way a boycott's supposed to happen. Right. And we love, love, love people who misunderstand boycotts. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you explain to them how a boycott works? Yeah, that was the thrust of my response to all three of those males. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them see it that way still. 20 pages later. <laughs> but, 20 pages later. But the nice thing is they aren't listening. Right. Uh, I hope not. They are <laughs> absolutely listening. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's right about that. <laughs> I think they're typing right now. <laughs> 
It's like when you had the 40 chiropractors show up and say, we're not well, coming yeah, to the show happen. anymore. Well, after we did the bullshit on chiropractic, when I called them baby-twisting motherfuckers. <laughs> totally accurate. We, uh, we had 40 chiropractors come to our show at the Rio to tell us afterwards they were boycotting us. That's the fantastic. Fantastic. I love that so much. Fantastic. It's kind of like Alex Jones going to see Hail Satan. And then doing talking about for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really not successful. You know, the things that I don't want uh, people to know about or uh, support. These are the things I'm not talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand how these things work. Right. I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about that? Ready? Rich? Well, I, I, you know, we're poking fun at him. I want to be a little gentle with him. I, I appreciate both of these people. And I do think that they'll still come out as fans in the end that they just disagree with us on this one issue and they agree with us on everything else. I also want to say, I think I agree with them too. I mean, uh, Koch brothers who gave a lot of money uh, to support gay marriage and legalization of marijuana. They do a lot of stuff for libertarian causes. Also the stuff they're doing with petroleum and the oil industry and maybe doing a certain suppression of uh, certain kinds of... um, of uh, new energy forms, uh, I am again Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen. I like a lot of stuff he does, and also he did the no nuke stuff, which I think was very, very dangerous and awful. We should have nuclear power. I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. So I disagree with the Koch brothers, where I disagree with Bruce Springsteen. You know, uh, I think you can have disagreements of that kind, and the Koch brothers certainly have a lot of stuff they do that I disagree with deeply. Yeah. Uh, they also, I was very, very happy at all the money they threw in to get gay marriage legalized, which another step down the way, I'm against gay marriage because I'm also against all marriage being controlled by the government. But it gets deeper and deeper. And as far as Monsanto, some of the stuff they've done on golden rice and the stuff they did it's with Norman Borlaug stuff. was very important and very, very wonderful and very great. Some of the stuff they've done with Roundup, Seems like it might be really, really terrible. So I want to say to those people, as we make fun of them, to just repeat what Reddy said, that our heart is completely with them. And I bet we uh, we agree about a lot of stuff with them. And it's just, when you have companies as big as Koch Brothers and Monsanto, uh, I can't imagine there's anybody on the planet that doesn't have something they agree with and something they disagree with right. done by those companies. Yeah. Well, the, uh, initial, the initial response that I sent them was LOD's response to his hospital stay right which we talked about at the time Mm -hmm. Lawrence O'Donnell uh, was very anti coke industries on his program for years and years and then he went to the hospital and the first thing that he saw was donated by David the wing that he was in was donated by David Coke and they uh, uh, he, he would very likely not be walking ever again if not for uh, uh, medical care, care of that quality. Now, if the Koch brother, if David Koch hadn't done that, would someone else have donated that wing? Maybe. We don't know. It's but but it, what LOD says about the Koch brothers on that particular show when he comes back from his accident is, uh, uh, we'll make you cry. It's pretty touching. Yeah. And his point is similar to the one I think you just made, which is uh, you could support somebody on their product and not agree with everything that they do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's almost like the world isn't a two-party system. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like people are complicated and interesting yeah. and yeah. think different things at so different So you think times. there's nuance in the world. Is that, uh, is that what you're trying to bring I'm up? I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to disagree with you on this. The point that I was trying to make with them was I was trying to focus on the boycott as- aspect of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If... If you disagree with what we say, if you find it so re- reprehensible on this one issue that you don't want to watch us for the rest of the shows, I understand that. You know, Eddie Griffin and uh, uh, Steve Harvey have mm-hmm. both come out with words to the effect of, I don't want atheists to watch our, my show. I don't mm-hmm. want them to buy tickets to my show. So I don't buy tickets to their shows. Mm-hmm. Everybody's I would happy. otherwise enjoy their comedy. Yeah. So I understand that point. Mm-hmm. But that's not a boycott. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, but to the uh, to the effect of what Monsanto and Coke Industries sell, those are products that 
we have all agreed to buy. We all want those products. Uh, we live in a, in a world that sells fossil fuels and we consume them. And until we get off of them, we can't fault those people for bringing those products to market. Well, that That's was that great that uh, when they did that uh, the cigarette thing, the guy from Philip Morris. There was an incredible speech that uh, was life changing, where uh, one of the big cheeses at Philip Morris, who was being uh, uh, speaking in front of the chair. Senate, said, um, "Hey, make it illegal. I'll right. find another job. Go ahead, make it illegal. Till it's legal, I'm doing my job. But make it illegal. Go ahead, just do it. Just make it illegal right now." You can pass that. Make tobacco illegal, I'll get another job. I'm fine with that. Uh, pretty good argument. You want the Koch brothers to go away? Stop driving your car. <laughs> stop using fossil fuels. Just stop it. They go out of business right away, except for their hospital business. Keep that going. <laughs> Hopefully that's already paid for. Also, so, there's, uh, there's, there's ways to do things without, like, this happens all the time with, you know, issues where, like, uh, boycott Starbucks, you know, never go to in and out the, the, the Bible verses, you know, like, all this stuff. Like, you can have a conversation. You can write letters. You can try to change people's minds. You know, like, you can do other things besides, like, try to, like, win and conquer, which often is very difficult. You mm -hmm. know, like, there's ways to, to write and... Well, also, case in point, Steve Harvey who does not like atheists, and right. we are atheists. And I don't think that people on his staff, that's been concealed from them. Right. I mean, I think people know that Penn and Teller are not religious. Yeah. Uh, Steve Harvey had us on the show. We did a trick. Yeah. Went over well in the show. People seem to like it. I think they're boycotting his show now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you don't like, if you're a hardcore Christian and don't like consorting with atheists, stop watching Steve Harvey because he had atheists on. End of question. <laughs> <laughs> I, th uh, I think you might be wrong, though, Matt, because I know in my relationship at home, yeah. when I threaten my wife rather than talk to her, yeah. we get more done. <laughs> <laughs> faster. Faster. Yeah, yeah. More done. Yeah. And faster. it builds a, a longer-lasting, stable relationship. I have to say, don't get me <laughs> wrong. I've explored both options. <laughs> so I have one last point on this. Okay. And uh, this is the argument that I presented that I didn't really get a solid answer for. If 100 million Christians rode into Penn Sunday School demanding that we stop talking about atheism and accept Jesus Christ, or they're going to stop listening to the show, is that something that you want us to do? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Do you that's why boycotts don't work that way. Yeah, do you want to be beholden to that? Uh, wow. By the way... If a hundred million Christians, yes, they could, we they would change could, that. They could offer us. <laughs> if a hundred million Christians offered we, us a buck each, yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we stop talking about yeah. atheism. Show's over. Show. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> so if you look, if you look at the lessons of Jesus and take yeah. away from you know the whether or not he we, actually existed or not, we have a some, lot of We could do a fishing spin. podcast. <laughs> We're still happy to do the fishing from you, the ocean podcast. We could do what we did yesterday, which Godot and I stared at a puddle of water for an hour. <laughs> That's uh, we could do a podcast on that. We could also do no podcast. All <laughs> <No, laughs> right. All right. It is a hundred million. Did you say a hundred million? Yeah. A hundred million. A hundred million dollars. We could just uh, spend this time playing hymns. <laughs> I clearly need to rethink my argument. A <laughs> hundred million dollars. We could play uh, hymns for an hour every week. We could sing along. <laughs> yeah, I'd learn a few. You could form a band. Jesus loves me, this I know. We could sing that. You just did. I did. There you go. You've already where's converted. My, where's my hundred million? It's coming. It's probably even a small part just to turn the theme song back to This Is My Father's House. <laughs> yeah. My Father's World. My Father's World, I mean. You should just put that up on, um, you know, uh, what's the eBay, you know, get a get an auction going. You can get enough money yeah, to hey. change it. Patreon, yeah. Well, you know, I was There's a point Patreon. where we would stop doing it. Yeah. I was and once we, having And a, I have no problem. We certainly accept that. You have to be very careful because uh, I was on a radio show in Florida. And a woman, I was arguing with her. <laughs> already. About, um, <laughs> she worked at um, Hooters. Uh, and that's she was good. Saying it's a was, better story than I thought There was be. no sexual element to Hooters whatsoever. <laughs> she said it's just about an owl. <laughs> and I said, I, I think it's a breast joke. And then the other DJ said, uh, if they 
quadrupled your salary and said you were going to go topless, would you consider that? And she turned to me and said, if someone offered you a million dollars to take off all your clothes, and before she finished the next clause, I was completely naked standing on the console. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so you just have to give us a whiff of $100 million <laughs> and we'll start singing hits. <laughs> just a slight smell of the green. By the way, <laughs> uh, I was talking... Uh, a, my doctor, the, the the woman who was giving me, I don't know what her exact um, medical who was degrees were. Who's injecting you with the coolest yeah, substance yeah, ever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, because I had to stay still under the uh, MRI or the x-ray machine, I guess it was. You couldn't actually run from the bear. Right. <laughs> um, she said I could have my headphones and listen to some music. To, I had to be there for 15 minutes. Not an impossible thing, but I thought it'll be nice to listen to some Velvet Underground while I'm speeding my brains out. <laughs> uh, and uh, she gave me the, uh, uh, I gave her my phone and I set up, the, and then she had to take it away, right? So I got the music playing and gave her the phone and she took it away. And then she did, she hit the button. And then she said, uh, ah, fucking iPhones. <laughs> she said, uh, and I said, do you have an Android? She said, yes. And the iPhone, you hit that button on the side and it stops it. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, also, the iPhones are so overpriced. They're so overpriced and ridiculous. You shouldn't have an iPhone unless you have money to burn. And I said to her, <laughs> I do have money to burn. <clears throat> and she kind of laughed. And I said, no, no, I really do. Because I realized that she'd used the perfect cliche because the day before, was rehearsal with Penn and Teller. And we're working on a new trick that is about forging, where Teller looks at a signed dollar bill and serial number for X amount of time, and then, f I mean, not X amount of time, get to where amount of time, and then forges it exactly. That's the gag. It is a, it, it is a uh, destroyed and restored bill to an impossible location. But we're framing it as forging. That's the gag on it. And we decided that the amount of time he should be able to look at the bill is the amount of time it takes to burn. So we were sitting on stage at the Rio during our rehearsal with like five people in our crew, and Teller and I had a propane torch. We were going, yeah, get us, get us another bill. If you hold it here, <laughs> <laughs> and literally burned money. Burning money. And then we were saying, now do we rip it in half? To, to have the serial number, do you want to rip it in quarters? So we had a stack of bills, and Teller and I were tearing them in half, tearing them in quarters, ripping them to pieces, and lighting them with a propane torch. And the day after, the woman says, if you have money to burn, you might as well get an iPhone. And I said, I have got an iPhone, and I spent yesterday burning money. And she laughed, and I said, no, no, I really did. And she laughed again. I said, no, no, I was really burning money. I said, I was burning money. I had a propane torch and I was burning money. Now, by the way, this is a confession of a federal crime. Yeah. Because I'm also looking into this. You are allowed to deface money all you want without um, trying to uh, defraud. Mm -hmm. If you try to change the um, right. serial number or the, um, or, the, uh, or the denomination, if you add a zero after the one to make it 10, mm -hmm. that's illegal. But you can do anything. And... You're not allowed to destroy money, which I didn't know. Because it seems like if you destroy money, everyone's money gets worth just a tiny bit more, right? Yeah. yeah. Goodness. It's not allowed. It's a federal offense to burn money. Now, it could be go to the Supreme Court if you were doing it under freedom of speech, like burning a flag, if burning money was a political statement. But just for fun, burning money is a federal offense. You're not allowed to do it. I've I've enjoyed the last Penn Sunday School. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we we just made the Koch brothers so happy, and now we've made them so upset. <laughs> they can't sit around and burn money anymore. You, yeah, they do. Light cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Villains always blink their eyes. Yeah, I don't I don't know. We should have lit, lit a cigar when we were there, shouldn't we? <laughs> if, we should, if you do it in the show, you better. We better light a cigar with the burning money. <laughs> I better pull out a big fat stogie, and maybe I'll get myself a top hat too. I want to look <laughs> just like the a guy. Monocle. That, yeah. Yeah. The monocle. And a warm mustache. Yeah. You kind of make a good commercial, you know, like uh, you know, like uh, for your like social media or something. But like, if you think Pen Teller and I are resting on our laurels, you can forget about it. <laughs> We're working on new things all the time. <laughs> as you burn money and <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Light a cigar. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it, it burns nice. Burns real pretty. 
Yeah. <laughs> if, let it be known. We have yeah, the prettiest yeah. burning money I, of any I, nation. I wouldn't know. High, <laughs> high, high rag content. Oh. You know, my dad um, was, was a numismatist. Yeah. Uh, and um, my dad was uh, the FBI, no, the Treasury, the T-men, used to come to our house occasionally and show my dad counterfeit bills. And my dad had the quality that the Treasury people were amazed at. He'd occasionally uh, go to talks and stuff. And they would bring him, it was amazing, they would bring him like five bills, five like $100 bills. And they would hold them up and say, are any of these counterfeit? My dad would say that one and point to it. And they would say, how do you know that? Because my dad was always right. My dad would always say, it's not beautiful. And they would say, what mistakes are you seeing? And he wouldn't use a loop, wouldn't use anything. They just hold it up. My dad could tell counterfeit like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. And my dad used to tell me about how the, the rag quality of mm-hmm. the paper, you could just tell by feeling it that it wasn't as beautiful. And my dad always would use the word beautiful. Mm-hmm. My dad thought money was beautifully made. Wow. He, he loved that apart. There was, an that. Est- and there was an aesthetic to it. Nice. So this is kind of, it's being tied in with being about my dad. This uh, this new bit we're working on. Wonderful. It'll be nice. But it involves uh, burning burning money. It's time. I'll, oh, I get an idea. They want us to do a, a hard slide into these. A hard slide is not right. They want us <laughs> to do a full stop. And now we're going to do an ad. I guess what Dustin's hoping for is that I'll give people the opportunity to fast forward through it. <laughs> to hit the 15-second advance without hearing the Without hearing any of the... Uh, it's time for spring cleaning. Quip spring. has got an easy way to start with your brushing habits. Just two minutes twice a day can help pave the way to healthier mouth and mind. And now the whole family can get refreshed with Quip. The new Kids Quip has the same two-minute timer and guiding pulses as our original version with no childish gimmicks so they can just brush like a grown-up. That'll be nice. Kids, the new brush is the same as our original version. Just tweak for size down mouth. Mouths. Kids are inspired to brush better and more often with oral care that looks and feels like the products the adults in their uh, in their life use. Uh, and they're proud to use Quip. Help them develop a grown-up routine without childish gimmicks. You're liking your Quip, aren't you? I do. I like it a yeah. lot. It's really and you nice. like the way it hangs in the mirror. I love that carrying case. Uh, sensitive sonic vibrations for effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. That's true. Equip does a really nice job. Multi-use cover. Talk about the cover, you know. It is a. It has a silicone strip on the back of it, so you 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 put your toothbrush inside of it when you're traveling, but then when you pull it out, that sticks to everybody's mirror without leaving a spot on it, and you just hang your toothbrush in it. No clutter on your counter. No clutter on the counter. No clutter on the counter quick. And you can take it. It's easy to take it to a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Just stick right there. That's the sound it makes. Yeah. No, it doesn't yeah. make any noise. <laughs> no there it sound. Is. Here's the no. sound. That's better. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the many reasons we love Quip, and you get a you get a uh, you get a, like a subscription to it. Your toothpaste yes. keeps coming. And I know you... they keep sending us toothpaste and new heads. It's great. That's why I love Quip. Why over one million happy, healthy mouths do too. Quip starts as twenty five bucks. If you go to getquip.com slash pen right now, you can get your first refill pack for freeze. <laughs> That's your first refill pack free at G E T Q U I P dot com slash pen. How do you spell pen? P E N N. Thank you. That's quick. Well done. Now we're out of the commercials here. Now I want to. I, is we have time to get into this, or should I wait? Let me. I was. We're going to talk about what the fuck ballets think it's doing. Okay. Ballet makes me crazy, but maybe we'll save that for Wednesday because it might be a long topic. Because I really don't know what's going on. I have been wanting, I've been wanting a dashiki for a <laughs> long time. When I was going on my fast, I said to everybody, "I want to wear a dashiki during my fast." And I went on Amazon and could not find a pleasing dashiki. Oh. So I typed into my uh, iPhone, which I have money to burn. I typed <laughs> in dashiki store, mm-hmm. and they sent me to a dashiki store, which was not satisfying. 
They did not have the dashiki I wanted. So we were on our way to the ballet, which we'll talk about on Wednesday. What the <laughs> fuck is going on there? <laughs> And we stopped at First Friday. Have you been to First Friday? Yes, I have. You've been to First Friday? Now? I have. Yeah. Have you been to First Friday? I have not. No. I've, First Friday. I've entertained in First Friday. Ah. They have goat tacos. I've been entertained in First Friday. Now, are those <laughs> goat tacos, are those tacos for goats, made yeah. by goats no, yeah, or made for by, goats? Yeah, made by goats. <laughs> made, by, <laughs> made by goats for That's goats. why they're so delicious. Yeah. And uh, I walked around because my rest of my fan was looking to buy greasy, awful animal products. Right. And goat I was tacos, just yeah. wandering around. And there was a store, I mean, a, a, a tent. A booth? A tent, a booth, that had dashikis. And there was, a, kiosk. there was a man there who looked almost precisely my size. Wow. And I said to him, hello, my new friend. <laughs> you look the same size as me. What size dashiki do you wear? And he said, I think a 2X will do you. I oh. said, see that yellow orange and brown dashiki right there. I would like that in a size that would fit you because I believe it will also fit me. And he said, pleasure. And he gave me the dashiki. And I took the dashiki home and I put it on. Although my wife told me you should wash it first. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be uh, uh, softer. softer. Yeah. But I, want, I was too excited because I'd finally had the dashiki I wanted for a long time. And I put the dashiki on. It has these two little pockets in the front. Mm. And it has a nice little neckline. And in my pocket could go my iPhone, which I have money to burn, <laughs> and maybe a deck of cards. And I could wear my dashiki around instead of the black work shirts, which as you might have noticed, I wear often. I have. <laughs> I put the dashiki on. I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, boy, I look really good in this dashiki. I look really good. And I felt really <laughs> happy about my dashiki. And then I usually wear just gym shorts around the house and no shirt you know, when I'm just doing my writing and stuff. But they were workmen around. I thought I'd put on the shirt. So I had my dashiki on and my gym shorts. And I was so pleased with my dashiki. I looked at the label and was able to find it online and then was feeling guilty. If I buy 50 dashikis online, what about my new friend at the booth? So I thought maybe next First Friday, I'll go back with just a heap load of money and I'll buy more dashikis from my friend who has every order. Let him have the markup because part of what I enjoyed was my interaction with him. He was also, he had a conga drummer over to one side and a woman dancing outside his dashiki booth. It was perfect. I liked it and I liked him. It was I the did. dashiki experience you were hoping for? Everything. And the guy who sold it to me was sweet and pleasant. and We had a connection. He had some sort of different accent than me. I don't know where he was from. Or maybe he just put it on. I Jersey? Maybe. <laughs> and uh, the Shikistan. I was all excited. All excited. Because, you know, if you've ever watched the trailer for Ghetto Freaks, you watch this Ghetto right Freaks. I don't think I have. Well, it's the best trailer ever done. <laughs> I think I have People to. should look it up. Yeah. Uh, the pronunciation of the word dashiki in that trailer is the greatest thing ever. And it's one of the things that put dashiki in my head. And then I suddenly realized that I cannot wear dashiki in public. I believe it's cultural appropriation. And being a guy, the worst kind of guy, as Spike Lee would say, from Massachusetts. I am from Massachusetts. And I think a fellow from Western Massachusetts who looks like me is no longer allowed to wear a dashiki in public. Isn't that true? That's probably true. Perhaps uh, new materials? You can get out of like a pinstripe dashiki or you know, like, your, like think, your show suit material or like something? A, like a pajama to she instead of going with the color what do you think i think you will probably get grief for it but i don't know if you should what do you think matt donnelly i'm curious to, I'm, here's what i'm curious about whether the guy who sold it to you knows it's cultural appropriation he knew he was doing you in that's what i want to know <laughs> i don't <laughs> think he cares right he's selling to shiki i think you're both selling him short this is my friend shut up well if that's the case wouldn't, it, wouldn't his opinion matter more than ours? Why don't you wear it to First Friday back to his booth? How am I when in you're trouble purchasing for that? the next one? Shut up, trouble. You said he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't care. He just wants to sell it. Well, then I think that uh, there was also some kindness under his. Uh, no, I don't take that away. But I think if if you're selling dashikis at First Friday, you're really happy when you sell them. Instead yeah. of not selling them to people. Yeah. I yeah, that's so. all I mean. I think the man Matt's in trouble, not me. Okay. 
Okay. I'll take all the trouble. I think the amount of people that would think Penn's crazy versus the amount of people thinking Penn's doing cultural appropriation. <laughs> I think I think the I think the mouth of Pac Man in the pie chart of that <laughs> is Penn's doing cultural appropriation. And I think the rest of the pie chart is Penn's crazy is the, is Pac Man. It's the body of Pac Man. Well, that's an interesting body take on cultural Man. appropriation. How crazy do you have to be for it to be okay? Yeah. Because I mean, and you're there. <laughs> Let's no, be clear. I just all of a sudden thought, I I pictured a Twitter post <laughs> of me happy in my dashiki, and yeah. someone saying, uh, "This is the worst kind of cultural appropriation. Get them, get them, get them." Well, th- you're okay. Yeah, <laughs> definitely no social media on that because mm-hmm. that's just target practice for people. That's but not even about feelings. What I'm also wondering is is the desire. To wear a dashiki wrong? As long as I don't do it, I'm okay. Oh, you're right? a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> That's got nothing to do with the dashiki. Oh, I didn't know we were going there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember growing up and, it, it, you know, seeing something from another culture and thinking it was cool and wanting to be part of that. Well, then I, yeah. was at, I was later at the Indian Festival the next week. There's a, a Sikh... <laughs> Six, six, they pronounce it wrong, like six, six, they don't pronounce Sikh, they say it differently. Um, a lot, of, they, and there was a turban wrapping booth where you could go get a turban wrapped on your head. Yeah. And I was at there because uh, uh, a, a child in my son's class was dancing. Her background is Indian. And she was dancing at the festival. And my son wanted to see it, so I took him into the hot, miserable sun to watch stupid dancing <laughs> and there was a Nehru I think joke. you're right about the terrible person thing I just want to go back for one moment and go yeah uh-huh good point Matt there was, please continue there was there was a Nehru jacket and I said geez I'd sure like a Nehru jacket and then I said am I going to fill my closet with things I can't wear so, so when are they going to say when are the plumbers going to say you can't wear that black dicky shirt because it's cultural appropriation. You're not a plumber. I went to India last year. Did you buy a Nehru jacket? I bought uh, several Nehru vests because uh-huh. they're the fucking coolest things ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, I, I, it's probably in the car. I love wearing yeah, I was it. wearing one earlier. And I thought about it for a couple minutes while we were there. And I thought, fuck it. These people are very excited that I'm buying stuff for them. They, you know, one guy insisted on, I was we'd like, we're only here for an hour. He's like, I'll make it for you. It'll be fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. We, you know, and then we sat in his but house and talked to his family. If you're dressing and, like a cowboy, it's because you like cowboys. And it's, and yeah, it's, but I mean, if when we, when we see somebody in a cowboy hat, jeans, and cowboy boots who is from the Middle East, we're not offended, right? Outraged. <laughs> <laughs> we're not cowboys. What are we? Asshole. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. If I saw something in the Middle East just like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Give that back to me. No, I, 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 we've we've brought this up, and we're we're all kind of equally lost on it. And it's not because we actually fall directly on the side like there's no such thing as cultural appropriation. I think we can all think of of of, of things where we probably would agree that it's inappropriate. Absolutely. Right? Part of it ha- is there an element of it that has to do with, like for instance, you wearing a dashiki around your house. Certainly, it's not cultural appropriation. You know what I mean? Like you're, yeah. you just have it. You're not trying to pretend you understand the dashiki culture. You're trying to be comfortable in your home. You yeah. tweeting it will certainly you'll get that accusation. There's not, I mean, a hundred percent you'll get that mm-hmm. accusation. So like, where, like, what, like, what if you just happen to where to go get a cup of coffee? Where are you actually committing cultural appropriation? But I also think that I believe one world stuff, and I believe that yeah. uh, you can. Everybody should be able to have everything. Like, for example, if you're hanging around with... I mean, I'm a huge Sun Ra fan. Right. I might be a bigger Sun Ra fan than some people who are African American. Right. I might be a bigger Sun Ra fan. You know, I might. Yeah. Uh, why do, can I emulate Sun Ra? Which is what I'm thinking. I'm right. Like. Right. And if you were, say, like to visit West Africa and buy a dashiki there mm-hmm. and come home with it, like... Like like we do idiotically with Hawaiian shirts, thinking mm-hmm. we can get away with it, and then we turns out that's not true. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> like you know, like let it out. Pal. What is that? I just, I just every time I think I can find the stylish one, and I can't. You can't. Um, 
Like what? What like, I always try to do. Don't we want to bring home souvenirs? Don't we want to celebrate the places we've learned about and things like that? So, like, I don't know. It's a really but when such someone, a difficult thing. When someone from Africa wears a three-piece suit, that's okay, right? Yeah, I th- you're always it's getting got to in do trouble. With balance of power. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I think you always get in trouble arguing reverse from from you're you know, right, white you're right. and American culture. You're right. We're so dominant. It's not. Uh, it's yeah. never the same. But luckily, so this is why I'm a Trump supporter. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> Trump is changing that. We are no longer going to be dominant. We <laughs> yeah. Are, so you're <laughs> fine to wear the dashiki. Yeah, exactly. Thanks to our savior, Donald <laughs> Trump, <laughs> who America goes from superpower to laughing stock in four years. Yeah. Pretty two, good. Two, two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll get two more, so six. Well, we get right, right, six years. <laughs> yeah. it, no one ever said anything about me wearing these Nehru things. No one ever. But said. I'm not, you know, I'm not Pendulette in the Twitter crosshairs, you know. But I, I would like. But it to. seems like, I man, it's a I, shirt. I, I, you're not I doing want, it nefariously. You're, I would like. You think it's cool? It, Own it, baby. It's, step it's, out in the dashiki. No, no, I'm not going to step out in the dashiki. <laughs> not because... I'll meet you at Madhouse Coffee. Can we send, because, ask Paul Simon. Can we send Godot out as a guinea pig in your dashiki and see how it goes? <laughs> a, <laughs> guinea, a guinea pig in a dashiki. <laughs> <laughs> That's cultural appropriate. Anyway, I like to say dashiki. I like, maybe I'll go to First Friday and buy dashikis and wear them around my house. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I also, for a brief period of time... Wore my dashiki with no pants. Yeah. And it's great. I, not once in this story did I picture you in pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, or shocking shorts. to hear that you did shorts. <laughs> or I shorts. cannot believe. Anyway, don't worry, everybody. I won't be wearing a dashiki in public, but know that my heart is dressed in a little dashiki. <laughs> that was Ben Sunday School. That's the name of the episode? Cha cha cha. Guinea pig in a dashiki. My yeah. heart is dressed in a little dashiki. You know. What are, uh, yeah. Um, cha cha. <laughs> you gotta oh, scream. Uh, scream. You become naked. You I'm go. not gonna scream. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Worst person to be stuck in a forest with if something goes wrong. If that's your scream. Ah. Ah. Come here, bear. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Come on, let's go run up the stairs. <laughs> run down the stairs. And Donny Osmond's innards are backwards. That's insane. The world is shaken. Not stirred. <laughs> you, you know, the person that talked to me after the uh, show the other day and said that at the end of the show when I say, you know, I love you, it made, it made them feel really good. Well, I'm talking to you. You know I love you.